Episode 52, combined strength. Do it, Al. <laughs> Show them the power. The pureness. Purity. Oh, damn. Al is scary. Man, this feels so good watching Al fight after all this time. Whoa. <laughs> Damn. Wow. I gotta take a breather. <laughs> I gotta take a minute here. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot already. It's like, oh, you wanted Al? You wanted to see Al fight? Yeah, yeah, we'll give you Al fighting. The payoff for this, though. The payoff of seeing Al. Humble little Al. Well, he's not little, but humble Al. Fighting like this against two of the baddest villains of all time. It's great. Yeah, but let's not forget, this is Pride and Ghibli. Did he just ride an Earth Dragon? Yo, Ed, I know you were worried about Al surpassing you. It's, it's kind of happening. Although he has a Philosopher's Stone, let's be fair. Ed with a Philosopher's Stone would be something cool to see too. I won't fall for that again! <laughs> oh, he's alright though. A flash bomb! A decoy! Nice. <gasps> Good job, Al. Yes, or the Kimberly. power of the yeah. Philosopher's Stone is truly something to behold. What I'd like to know is why you don't use that power to get your original body back. He's got to use it unselfishly. You and your brother could use the stone to restore your body. Kimberly feels genuinely the curious here. Would end, wouldn't it? This is not a taunt. This is like him being curious. It isn't right. I have to choose between returning to our original bodies and saving everyone. But why can't we have our real bodies back and save everyone? It isn't fair! But it's the law of equivalent exchange. Well, I say searching for possibilities that aren't bound by rules or laws. That's how humanity advances. <laughs> so if you can discover an exception to the rule, you can effectively rewrite the laws of nature as we understand them. Is that how it's supposed to go? Because there is another possibility, you know. You don't get your bodies back. And you don't save everyone. That could certainly happen. Don't remind me. <sighs> oh, he's not even like at full power yet. I don't even know where to begin. So the fight, first of all, I feel like that, that fight just reduced me to like my five-year-old self. I'm just like babbling nonsense. But there were so many great moments in quick succession. I love that Pride threw a shoe at Al. That was amazing. Which got turned into a sword which then was bent. So far in the show, I can't think of any action sequence I enjoyed more than that. I think the, the close second would be like Bradley Greed, but I like this better. And maybe it's because I care more about Al than I care about Greed. Forget everything I said about using the Philosopher's Stone being controversial. Give it to Al. Give the power to Al. This fight really drives home the fact that they've been playing at a disadvantage. The villains of the show have such an edge on them just because they're willing to use all these, these tools that they have at their disposal. And so far, the protagonists have not really. But it's just landing for me what a big difference that makes. Like, Ed with a Philosopher's Stone would be deadly. And then, the second great thing, that amazing conversation between Al and Kimberly. I love how... We have this intense action sequence, and then we have this really deep conversation where they, they kind of open up to each other. And Kimberly, being the lovable intellectual that he is, is really interested in this conversation. Like, he's processing what Al's saying non-antagonistically. He's just, like, listening carefully. He's asking questions to understand. And then he is pointing out the flaws in what Al's saying, or, you know, other possibilities to Al, but not in a way that's him berating Al, it's just Kimberly being very real. You know, he's just keeping it real. <laughs> because to me, it seems like he's actually searching for something here in this conversation, and he's interested in the ideas and what they can bring him, and so he's gonna, like, break them down in the pursuit of understanding and knowledge. But he's definitely processing it, and he has a little bit of an edge on Al, because what he's saying is, is right. Like, there's a very real possibility that they're not gonna get their bodies back, and in fact, it seems sort of unrealistic what Al is saying, that, you know, we can have more than what the laws are, or at least the laws that we know. I don't know if this is exactly breaking the laws of alchemy, though, right? Like, you can imagine possible scenarios where they defeat the villains but then also still are able to re restore their bodies and ed and al are all about hope so you know why not strive for that if anybody can do it it's them but kimberly's not wrong that failure is possible in both of these areas nice transition to the armstrong fight i'm not finished yet oh wow i actually got him
This team, though. Oh no. I'm feeling a little bit bad for Sloth, like I felt for Gluttony. All he wanted to do was rest. Fighting all out is the biggest pain of all. Say what? <laughs> He's not even going all out yet. All right, General Armstrong, throw down your Just weapon. get out. What the hell is that huge thing? I see you haven't been to our uh, our regular officer meetings. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Looks like I missed. Is this power actually speed? That is a twist. What incredible speed! Yeah. The yeah. Indeed. I am the fastest homunculus. Of course of you are. Of course. No. Finally. Did she actually just get hit there? No. I love that sound. There's nothing more beautiful than the sound of two strong souls colliding against each other in battle. Okay, Gray Fox. It will take more than that to kill him. <laughs> Kimberly's having a great time, as usual. Whoa, that was really clever. That's why they call him the Great Detective. Or that's why I call him that. <laughs> Remember, I can tell where you are by smell. I think that's Right, he, he got gluttony. Are you sure? I still think you're giving us humans too little credit. <laughs> Even with the stone, there's no way you'll win this all by yourself. I'm not alone. <laughs> Who do you give it to? Stone go. Who gets to be the hero this time? It's an attack from behind. Nice, Mr. Lion. Oh, what the heck? Dr. Marco! Dr. Marco with a Philosopher's Stone is a lot. Man, this just keeps escalating. I guess that shows you what a Philosopher's Stone can do for you, huh? There you go. That's what I was expecting. Go for the legs! No, not this again. <laughs> not this sound effect. At least it's useful. What, no skulls? No, she's fine. She's fine. Yeah, he saved her. I was just dislocated. And how about you? Uh, a few fractures, that's all. <laughs> just a broken spine, you know, no big deal. Damaged internal organs. I'm fine. Walk it off. You know what they say in Briggs? You don't need your internal organs or your spine. I've had better spine breaks. Did Sloth just punch up from the ground? He stopped? I'm surprised. You care about Kimberly? He's reluctant to endanger Kimberly. But that's not like him at all. It isn't, so there must be something else. Is Kimberly a sacrifice? Fight back, Dr. Marco. <laughs> I don't know why that was so hilarious, but that was great. Who? I can't believe I'm happy to see a child be hit by a car, but here we are. I got you. I really got you. He's finally useful. You're yes. All right. I eat my words, off, finally. You are the last one I expected. <laughs> right? You guys exactly. I want to blow you my own, damn it. Do you hear me? How about that? I landed a shot and it was on the strongest homunculus of them all! I got it big time! Good job. You got one in. Well done, Dr. Marco. Dr. Marco, man, he's so clutch. Epic ravine jump. We need to meet up with Ed and get rid of this father guy before that thing can catch up to us. Yeah, this is still scary because you're just leaving Pride and Kimberly out here to do who knows what. I think that color suits you very well, don't you? Kimberly's having a great time right now. One can be sure. In this world, humans are of little consequence. <laughs> what was it you were always saying? That you wanted to see which way the world would choose? And here you are, dying like a pathetic wreck. It must be humiliating. K. 
can't tell if eating him or helping him. Looks like because eating him. Continue to live inside me. Damn, I don't want to see Kimberly go, even though he's terrible. He's such a good villain. But you never know, eating him might not be the end. He's still going to exist in there somehow. Because I'm wondering what it meant that Pride spared him. He must need him for something, and if he's eating him, he might be able to still put him to use. Or Kimberly's dead. <laughs> it's one of those. But why do I feel like even if this is the end for Kimberly, this is actually not the worst ending for him in terms of his own perspective? He wants to live, but like, he gets to be part of a homunculus. That's pretty cool. He's really living now. The Crimson Alchemist dying in a pool of blood. I guess that's what Pride was alluding to with the whole color thing. What happened? Whoa! Olivier, are you able to stand? <laughs> Just get out of here. Let them do their thing. You can't die until all of the paperwork is in place! There's nothing to worry about there. If I die, the entire estate will be passed along to Colonel Mustang. You decided that without consulting the family? <laughs> what are these soldiers thinking right now? They're so irrelevant. We're under attack? It can't be. So the Brig soldiers? soldiers? Oh, it's the zombies. Just one thing after another. Even when they're shot, they don't die. You gotta shoot him in the head. Well, what's it gonna be? Do you plan on shooting us and then fall prey to the monsters after? Or are you going to work with us and bring them down together? Come on, easy choice. Make up your own damn minds now! Damn, it's crazy how, like, the, the danger just keeps escalating. It's like, Sloth is already bringing Olivia and Alex to the verge of death. And then also we got zombies. And then with Mei Chong, if Envy isn't bad enough, you got the zombies again. The feeling I had a couple episodes ago about the tide shifting in favor of the protagonists, that is, that is quickly fading. My, these soldiers are tasty. And with Envy can get more powerful stronger. with everyone, right? Yeah, damn. It's just like food. They're really still coming! Why won't they Bear the Butcher. Still helping out in some small way. I'm running out of quills. Uh, my spit's starting to dry up too. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Stop it! Look out! Things do always seem to get messy whenever you're around. <laughs> Maybe I could lend you a hand. Full metal. Now this is a cool team. So I feel like out of all the parallel fights happening, the Ed one is the weakest. Even though it's cool to see him fight side by side with Scar, I really appreciate that. But having Roy show up makes me really excited. That's a really cool full circle to have them fighting back to back. When Roy brought Ed into this whole thing, and initially I thought they were going to be... They're going to have more of an antagonistic relationship. But here they are at the end ready to fight together. It's so cool. The action this episode, these episodes, is just so top tier. It's crazy to think that perhaps this is the beginning of this arc, this ending arc. Watching it, I have the feeling like I can't get my footing because so many things happen in such quick succession. I'm pretty shocked about the Kimberly death. My hope, and I guess my suspicion, is that this is not the end of him. For him to be absorbed by pride like that, I'm guessing that's not random. He's going to make a reappearance. I've been thinking a lot about Kimberly recently and what makes him so appealing. I think we root for Kimberly for similar reasons that we root for gangsters in movies, which is that even though he's terrible, he exists on a higher level of moral understanding than you usually see. On one level, we have where most people, I think, exist, which is that they're aware of right and wrong, and they mostly perform good actions, but part of the motivation for their good actions lacks an awareness of the morality or a robust worldview that connects to it and is partly based on fear of retribution. Like, I think a lot of people, and I'm including myself in this, would probably be a lot worse if there were never any consequences for our actions. So a lot of our morality is shaped not by honest expression or by really rich understanding or solid understanding, but by the limitations of our environment. Then above that, you have someone like Kimberly, who is totally thought out, totally reasonable, and totally independent of influence in that way. Like, he makes his own world. He is not at all constrained by society. He is authentic to his own beliefs and genuine and acts without fear according to those beliefs. And I think that's sometimes the appeal of criminals in 
TV shows, like I mentioned gangsters, because they create their own world. They're not victims of society. And that's appealing to us because I think there's a part of that that's desirable, right? Like the independence of spirit and something that's often connected with this kind of villainy, they are free. There's like a freedom there. Like in The Godfather, he says, I want to be the one holding the strings, right? He doesn't want to be controlled by others. And The Godfather makes decisions totally based on his own values and what he thinks is right for him and his family. The downside is that these characters do terrible things and so it can be confusing like how can I root for somebody who is so awful? Which is why I think the next level above that is some of the protagonists in the show where they are like Kimberly in that way, like they have explored, they have thought, they are critical thinkers, they do have deeply rooted values, but they don't do things to make the world worse and they're willing to sacrifice themselves and their own well-being to hold up those ideals. And so that's sort of the higher plane. So to me, in some twisted way of looking at things, Kimberly is a truer person than most people would be but he's nowhere near as powerful or as good as someone like Al, let's say. Although in certain ways, Kimberly actually probably does surpass Al. Like his intellect is really sharp, but intellect is not the only thing that matters. You know, heart matters too. It's about having a set of values and then living in the world in accordance with those values in a way that makes things better for people and is not selfish. I'm saying this just in case this is actually the end of Kimberly, which I sort of hope it isn't. Although this is probably the end of uh, White Hat Detective Kimberly. How many hats did he lose in total? But anyway, that's the end of episode 52. I'll see you guys next time when we get what I'm hoping will be an amazing, epic, bro-filled battle with Ed and Roy Mustang.